Okay, you got something to say about common reputation here, Dan. All right, go ahead. Well, when we um, we look at uh, the scripture and it was dealing with, um, you know, we see this uh, registration that was going on at the time or the taxation of the world with Augustus Caesar. He's quite the unique individual, just so you know this. Augustus Caesar uh, in Luke 2, verse 1, and it says, and it came to pass in those days that there came a decree from Augustus Caesar that all the world should be taxed. Now, remember, he's taxing the world. World is opposite to spiritual. So do not confuse what's going on here. If you're acting as someone of the world, yes, our name appears to be in a concept of the world, but it is not of the world. And if you become worldly, then you're known by that worldly Caesarian name or birth name, um, which has been linked as we've gone through various videos on this, that uh, the Dictionary of Canadian Law, fifth edition, defines uh, surname or birth name as the legal surname in the jurisdiction where the person was born. So it's birthing a persona or a mask, an artificial birth, not a natural where you would have come from uh, in the conception of birth from what is truly life, you're being birthed out of something that is artificial. So, of course, they're birthing the personas. Now, um, when uh, you look at the uh, the commentary in the Geneva Bible, which was, you know, quite unique here, uh, the Geneva 1599, uh, I'm sure that the 1560 probably shares the same, but um, I'm just quoting what I have in front of me right now. And under the comment about uh, Augustus Caesar, uh, who was taxing the world, um, he uh, he was also known as uh, he had taken on a title, uh, which would you know concern us to an extent where the confusion can happen. Uh, Jesus was called Savior of the world. Uh, Augustus Caesar was had taken on the title the uh, Savior of the common people of Rome. OK, so he was considered to be the savior of the commoners, the prostitutes, because common meant prostitute. So we want to, you know, you check out the words, you can go into Samuel Johnson's dictionary of 1755. You can go into uh, common uh, in a polluted sense. It's used uh, in scripture. Um, we uh, we know that uh, the 1828 Noah Webster used it referring to a prostitute kind of like a hireling, you're selling yourself for money or prostituting yourself to a false god, and therefore you would bear this false lord name God in your name, which is what these last names all link to when you go to the origin of where they came from, all these surnames, they're all from lords, uh, legal lords. But uh, the Luke uh, 2 verse 1 says, Christ the Son of God, taking upon him the form of a servant, and making himself of no reputation is poorly born in a stable and by means of Augustus, the mightiest prince in the world, thinking nothing less, hath his cradle prepared in Bethlehem as the prophet forewarned. So we, we can see here that uh, Jesus was not born of any common, he had no reputation um, and therefore when you use that word repute in that sense, he would not have had any legal repute or common repute. And when we go to the uh, Black's Law fourth under dealing with these positive law surnames um, that are added on to what you would have had naturally under God's law, under natural law, um, it says under addition, because addition is also the symbol for positive or the plus sign, of man's law, not God's law. And it says, name, whatever is added uh, to a man's name by way of title or description. That's under addition, Black's Law, fourth. And then it gets into, it says, at common law, there was no need of addition in any case. It was required only by statute of the first Henry V, uh, in cases where process of outlawry lies. In all other cases, it is only a description of the person. 
and common reputation is sufficient. So surnames are therefore to identify a person under common reputation, which would be to identify someone as a member participating in a prostitution of their real natural body, but they're now under the mask of a legal body corporate and therefore are known as a debt or a debtor in that system. So absolutely opposite uh, to, uh, to what we may have thought if we hadn't done any research, but Jesus certainly was not born a debtor. He was not born in civil legal status. He was accused of being legal to the world at that time upon his death, but he actually was without sin. He was without debt. In actuality, to be executed as a Roman prisoner, you required to have a legal civil status in order for execution to occur. So they could only execute someone bearing a civil status. And so they made, Christ was made sin for us, but he was without debt. He was innocent. He had no legal title. He had no common reputation. As the people of God uh, will realize that you are peculiar, God has chosen a peculiar people, uh, peculiar being opposite to common. So all there laying out in front of us, didn't see it because the pastors and the shepherds out there are too busy collecting off the collection plate um, and busying themselves being prostitutes themselves, money changing in the temple. So, it, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, but unfortunately, as Jesus overturned the money changers in the temple at his time, the money changers are still there and they operate legalized Christianity. Woe unto the uh, the the shepherds who are, uh, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing. Being uh, operated by lawyers. So they, the, you know, the woe unto lawyers for you take away the key of knowledge. They take away the keys of your kingdom, uh, of the kingdom, of you entering into that kingdom through acceptance of Christ, through free grace. They want to keep you into a legal whoredom so you continue to uh, serve and operate for the God of mammon. All right. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it.